quit doing this in your QuickBooks chart of accounts. Hey everyone, this is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate the subscription as well. And so let's get started. I say quit doing this in your QuickBooks chart of accounts because a lot of people make the same mistakes when they're setting up their chart of accounts. Now, I understand when you start QuickBooks and you know you, you get going, you get this preset chart of accounts, and you build it over time. So you add accounts, you you know uh, make accounts inactive, maybe you delete some accounts. You customize it over time for your particular business. Now, here's what happens 99% of the time. So first of all, we're gonna go to the chart of accounts. So the way you do this, you go to company and you go down to chart of accounts right here. Okay, so this is the chart of accounts. Now, just a quick overview if you're not familiar with it. it. It's basically just a listing of all the accounts that you're going to code things to in QuickBooks. So any transaction, checking account, accounts receivable, prepaid expenses, all these different things. This is where you're going to code things to certain accounts. Now, you'll notice here that all of these balance sheet items, so bank account, all assets, liabilities, and equity, they have balances. The income, cost of goods sold, and all the expense accounts do not have balances. It is supposed to be set up this way. Uh, this is correct, and that's because the balance sheet is ongoing, so you track it day to day, month to month, year to year, and it carries over. So for example, if you have cash at in your checking account of 41.585 and 14 cents at December 31st, it's not going to start over on January 1st. It's going to carry over as of January 1st, and that's why you see all these numbers. Now, this chart of accounts in the sample company file is set up pretty well. And as you scroll down here, you're going to see all these uh, various accounts. This is the mistake that most people make. They will go in and they will set up an account for all sorts of different things. Uh, so they'll set up accounts for vendors. They'll set up accounts, you know, let's say it's cost of goods sold, for example, and it's, um, you know, subcontractors. And they'll set up an account for every single subcontractor. That is not the way you want to do it. I also see a lot of vendors down in the expense area, okay? The whole goal when you're setting up your chart of accounts needs to be you want as as little as main accounts as possible these are all the main accounts with the diamond all the way to the left and then you can fill in all the details of those main accounts with all these sub accounts so these are sub accounts and let me show you how to do that if we go into edit we're going to go into this account and you basically just say it's a sub account of job expenses. So you don't make bond expense its own account. You make it a sub account of job expenses as an example. So again, you want as few main accounts as possible. You just want enough that are broad categories. And then you can fill in the details like insurance here with all the sub accounts. It's very, very simple to do. So the first thing you should do is go through your chart of accounts and make sure you have condensed it as much as possible. Consolidate it down as much as possible. Make all the main accounts the, the main ones. And if you can move any of your sub accounts or any of your other main accounts to be a sub account, then do it. Uh, because you don't want to print off a profit and loss or a balance sheet that is 10 pages long. It's unreadable and it ends up just not making sense. Okay, so quit doing it. It uh, makes things much, much easier when you have less accounts as opposed to more accounts. And if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below.